My name is Stan Prentice, and the first thing I want to talk to you about is the importance of recording and preserving the stories and experiences of your life or the stories of someone in your family. I'd like to illustrate this by telling a story of my own. When my grandfather died, he left several albums and boxes of family pictures. My mother and I went through them together. There were pictures of family members we didn't know, people having picnics, riding horses, playing in the snow, wonderful pictures. I could easily recognize my grandfather in many of them, but the other people were a mystery. Who were these people? They were obviously important to my grandfather. After all, he had kept their pictures all those years. But I didn't even know who they were or whether they were family. It so happened that a few years later, I had the chance to attend a family reunion at the little town in Washington State where my grandfather had been born and raised. As I later learned, my grandfather's grandfather had come west with his brother from Indiana in a covered wagon. So I, I brought a bunch of my grandfather's pictures to the reunion to see if anyone in the family could identify them. But no luck. That is, until I had this one wonderful faded picture of a little old rumpled man with a bald head and a white beard. The picture looked like it had been taken around the turn of the last century, and this guy was already old at that time. I passed it around the table to see if anybody knew who this interesting character might be, whether he was even a family member. One at a time, everybody looked at the picture and they shook their heads, said, no, no, don't know him. But then the photo was passed to a little old lady sitting at the far end of the table. Her name was Myrtle. She had thick glasses and she was pretty frail. I didn't even know what her relation to me was at the time or even if there was one. But when that picture of that little bearded old man got to her, Myrtle looked at it carefully. A smile came across her lips and she quietly said, that's my daddy. Well, I, I had had no idea. It turned out that Myrtle's daddy was one of the two brothers who had come west in that covered wagon. Her daddy was the younger brother of my grandfather's grandfather. Myrtle invited me to her house the next day, and she gave me pictures of my grandfather as a young man, pictures of my great-grandfather, and even my great-great-grandfather. She told me the stories of our pioneer ancestors who had come west from Indiana in covered wagons, tales of crossing raging rivers and broken wagons, and stories of both good and bad relations with local Native Americans. Can you imagine? She was such a treasure, and so were her stories. That was 1981. <clears throat> what I kick myself about today is this. I had a VHS camcorder with me at the time, but I didn't think to turn it on to record Myrtle's stories. Even though I heard a bunch of great stories that day, think of all the treasured family history that was lost. Because the following year, Myrtle died. And I just don't remember all the details of her stories. I could tell you some of the basics, but the little gems of the details were lost forever. I'll never be able to tell her stories in her words with such great detail. And these are the reasons that I say your story matters and why we work to preserve our stories. You may think that the story of your life is nothing special, not worth telling. Many of us think that. After all, we never became famous. We never starred in a movie or ran for governor. Who wants to hear my story, you may ask? Well, let me tell you who would like to hear your story. Your family, that is who. I assure you, your memories and your experiences are valuable, precious gifts that need to be handed down to your children, your children's children, and future generations. Your story matters a lot more than you think. I'd like to start by asking you to think about the answers to a few questions. Here they are. Did you know your grandparents? Do you know what your grandfather did for a living? 
Do you know what your grandmother did for fun when she was a little girl? Do you know what kind of relationship your grandfather had with his father? You probably knew your grandparents. You may know what your grandfather did for a living. But do you know about your grandmother's childhood? And how did your grandfather get along with his father? Did he ever tell you that? Wouldn't that be an interesting story to hear about? What about the dreams that your grandmother had when she was a young woman? What achievements was she proud of? What were her disappointments in life? What was her greatest joy or deepest sorrow? Don't you wish you could ask your grandparents questions like these today? And don't you think that someday your children and grandchildren will want to know these things about you? Take a look at this box. It's loaded with old black and white family photos. Do you have pictures like this at your house? How about a photo album like this? When you look at your photos, can you identify who the people are? Do you know where or when those photos were taken? Do you have any idea what the people in the pictures are doing or even feeling? Did anybody even take the time to write down who these people were or what was going on in the photos? So many families have their precious pictures stored in albums or boxes that are unlabeled with no stories attached. All the stories of your life, everything you ever learned from your father, every story your mother ever told you, they live in your memories. And when you're gone, those stories will be gone too. All the family stories that were told to you, and especially all the stories that only you can tell about your own life. All the stories that someday your children, grandchildren, and yes, your great-great-grandchildren will wish that you had preserved for them. Remember this, regardless of your financial resources, you are rich in memories, experiences, beliefs, and values. This intangible legacy, your legacy, will be priceless to your family. What will your children or your children's children inherit from you? Maybe some money, yes. Maybe some property. Maybe a little or maybe a lot of stuff. But what is the most valuable thing they will inherit from you? That will be who you are, what you have experienced, and what you have to tell. That's why your story matters. That is your true legacy. That is what you hand down through the generations.